Well, it's a very warm welcome and thank you for joining us on this independent off-tube studio commentary. The game at the GTEC Community Stadium has just got underway as uh, Leeds, you know, as Brentford take on uh, Leeds United. And uh, both teams have making a, a good start to the season. Leeds with uh, eight points from their first five games. Brentford uh, just behind them on uh, six points after their five games. Both teams with a plus three goal difference. And uh, it's myself, uh, Paul Shabakovic and uh, John Hogan taking you through the action. John, it's a sort of game where I think both sides will be looking at, at the opposition thinking we can score today. Yeah, I, I think so. We were talking about the game before we kicked off. Brentford have scored in their last five games. You know, uh, clearly uh, uh, they know the route to goal. I think uh, Tony's got a great scoring record, hasn't he, for the Bees? Something like 47 and 86. Um, so he knows where the back of the net is. And four leads, they... Uh, you know, they, they've done well. They, I think the new signs have bedded in quite well. They're uh, sort of one of the newest of that bunch. Luis Sinistera got his uh, goal in midweek against Everton, and I thought he looked quite good. But again, they're without uh, Patrick Bamford, who's uh, only fit enough to be on the bench. And they lost uh, Rodrigo last time, who'd scored a few goals at the start of the season. I think it all balances out. Leeds are a bit taller than uh, Brentford today, in fact, quite a lot taller. Brentford are a small team today. So that might have a bearing on it, but honestly, I, I wouldn't know where the points are going today. I think it's one of those which is a little bit of a pick -a Both sides, I think, were, have had some good performances, although both uh, Brentford and Leeds haven't looked particularly strong away from home, so maybe this is an opportunity for Leeds to try and get that uh, away win uh, on the road. But uh, throw on here to Leeds down the uh, left-hand side. So just remind you of the two teams very quickly. It is uh, David Raya in goal for Brentford with a uh, back four of Aaron Hickey, Pontus Janssen, Ben Mee and Rico Henry. The three in midfield are Shandon Baptiste, Vitaly Yano and Matthias Jensen with Brian and Bumo, Keen Lewis Potter and Ivan Tony as the uh, front three for Leeds United. Elan Melier is in goal with a back four of Cody Drame, Robin Koch, Diego Lorente and Pascal Strauch. The two holding midfielders are Tyler Adams and Mark Rocker with Lewis Sinistera, uh, Brendan Aronson and uh, Jack Harrison as the attacking three playing behind uh, Joe Gelthart. But here come Brentford now with a ball over the top from uh, Baptiste. He's got a runner here on the left-hand side just uh, held up and sent back towards Rico Henry. is cross going in just over the head of Tony and it's uh, a comfortable header in the end uh, away by Strauch. But Brentford keep the pressure on down the left-hand side. Another cross coming in. Melier coming out and punching this one. And I think the referee had either spotted a foul or a uh, potential push in there somewhere. And it's uh, been given as a uh, free kick to Elite. Yeah, and a uh, push, I think you said there, Diego Lorente uh, making that gesture to uh, Ivan Tony. It's like uh, he pushed the big centre-back into his own keeper, uh, trying to elicit some kind of uh, mistake. We saw uh, Cody Drama uh, getting robbed there, didn't we? The uh, young right back, just 20 years of age. Uh, we haven't seen too much of him. He was on loan at Cardiff uh, last season and apparently played quite well. An England under 21. And, uh, well, Aaron Hickey uh, for Brentford playing right back today. Uh, he's uh, 20 years of age, that's all as well. And he's... Uh, well, just as we say that, though, Leeds have been playing out from the oh. back. They're caught in possession and a strike coming in from the uh, edge of the area, just curling wide. That's something that both teams have to be uh, aware of, that there is some pace in their front lines, both uh, Brentford and Leeds. And uh, just a bit of a loose ball at the edge of the area. I think that was Drame, just uh, commentator's curse there. It might have been Cock actually looking at the replay there. Just a little bit slow in playing this one out from the back. It was picked off and it was uh, King Lewis Potter with the effort, uh, just uh, sending it wide. But uh, in the end, uh, that's a bit of a warning there for Leeds, who haven't really got out of their own half in these uh, first four minutes. Long clearance now from Melier, headed on by uh, Strauch. And uh, Harrison trying to get on the end of that one. But Hickey uh, gets there just ahead of him. And it will be a uh, throw to Leeds now down the uh, left-hand side. Strauch uh, getting that ball in. It's uh, nodded out for another throw. And uh, Strauch now waiting to uh, restart play. But uh, Leeds in their uh, change uh, black strip today. Brentford is always in their uh, red and white stripes at home. And uh, Strauch had a few options in the box. Prefers to go uh, back, towards, um, back towards Tyler Adams. Here is uh, Strauch again. Now Harrison got two Brentford players for company here. Baptista and uh, Hickey. Can't quite get past the two of them. Uh, he gets a throw, which he takes himself, going uh, back towards uh, Tyler Adams again. And uh, now on the halfway line here with uh, Diego Lorente. He clips a ball in, looking for uh, Gelthart. But uh, Ben Meat just there to uh, shepherd the young Leeds player away. And that ball's into the arms of Ryan. Tries to start Brentford off early, but his uh, goal kick goes straight out for a throw. Yeah, both teams uh, really need to pass the ball better, don't they? Uh, Joe Gallat's not a target man. Against uh, Everton in midweek, Leeds were overloading down the left-hand side. And I kept thinking or, or wondering why. 
So they don't have a target to hit, really. Rodrigo had left the field after 10 minutes, and so it seemed a weird thing to do. Here again, you know, Joe Gallard, who had a couple of chances against the Toffees, he's not really a target man. You know, you, you want to uh, play him in just at the edge of the area and then uh, watch him because you've got a bit of talent and enough to get shots away. But uh, that ball floated over the top. He's really not for him. No, it's not. But uh, Lees have uh, been able to keep possession and it's uh, played down the left-hand side for uh, Strout, who's uh, probably a little bit higher up the field than he likes to be, really. But uh, gets to the edge of the area, goes back towards uh, Tyler Adams and uh, banks of uh, Brentford players in front of the penalty but that's a lovely ball threaded through into the box and a strike coming in from uh, Mark Rocker it needed a challenge there from Vitaly Janil and uh, he puts it out for a uh, corner kick but that's patient from Leeds look like they'd sort of run out of options at the edge of the box but they still managed to thread a ball in yeah and that's good stuff from Mark uh, Rocker because you expect him to be dictating play but they need runners don't they uh, they've got the ball Brentford uh, ease back just watching everything happen in front of them so you need those midfield runners into the box he couldn't quite get the cut back away, and I think it must have got a double kiss, came back off Rocco, but that was uh, enterprising stuff from Leeds. So uh, just over five minutes on the clock, goal is here at uh, the GTEC Community Stadium. Rico Henry now bringing the ball out for Brentford. Got uh, three Leeds players coming towards him, goes across now towards uh, Hickey down the uh, right-hand side, and Bumo's just ahead of him, trying to get away uh, from Strack. Felt as though he might have been pushed. Referee uh, Rob Jones not interested, and a long ball played down the right-hand side. Is in his terror, going uh, back towards uh, Adams. Drame now joining the attack as well. Leeds have got players in front here. It's played towards the edge of the area. Harrison just couldn't quite keep his feet. And uh, Brentford now still insisting on playing out from the back. There was a foul. The referee does give the Bees the advantage, which uh, lasted all of a few seconds before uh, Mbumo runs uh, straight into Diego Lorente. So here come Leeds again with a uh, ball down the left-hand side now towards Harrison. Under pressure there from a uh, former Leeds man, uh, Pontus Janssen. Back to Strauch, and uh, here goes uh, Harrison again. Got a bit more space this time, but this time it's Hickey closing him down, and he puts it out uh, for a uh, throw but this is a good response from Leeds first couple of minutes just seemed to be under pressure there was that loose ball and a potential uh, goal scoring opportunity for Brentford but since then it's the home side that can't get out of their own half yeah I think uh, I, I look at the uh, midfield for Brentford and I, and I think they've got their hands full today you know Tyler Adams Mark Rocker have made a pretty good start they'll be aided and abetted by the three in front and of course uh, Brendan Harrison has got incredible work rate so too as in Bumo though, and uh, I think yeah, it, it all balances out. Here come Leeds again, but then the ball's just smashed across the face, and uh, that's gone straight out. Will be a goal kick. Yeah, it was uh, Drame that had got forward. He sort of uh, did a sort of so tried to volley that one across goal. I don't think it was in any way a shot. He was trying to cross it, but it just uh, flared off his boot there a bit, and it got away uh, from uh, Gelthart. But uh, as you say, Brentford are missing uh, Christian Norgard. Their sort of uh, main. Uh, battering ram in midfield really one of the uh, league leaders last season in terms of interceptions and tackles won so with him being out for potentially up to a month that is going to be a, a loss for Brentford that is uh, for sure but uh, Ben Mee now switching play over towards the uh, right hand side for Aaron Hickey a pass to uh, Baptiste just a little bit over here and Brentford have potentially left a couple of uh, spaces at the back as they push forward but the ball to uh, Gelhart seems to be just behind him so here come uh, Brentford again now with uh, Rico Henry out towards uh, Lewis Potter on the uh, left-hand side. The pass on the overlap, though, is a well over hit there from uh, Lewis Potter. Rico Henry won't thank him for having to run the whole length of the pitch to get a pass that he was never going to get on the end of. Yeah, I, I was asking one or two of the boys in the office uh, what they knew about Keane Lewis Potter, and uh, generally it was like a thumbs up. Uh, he played at my local club, Bradford Park Avenue, five games without a goal in the National League uh, North, but it must have been... Uh, a fairly steep rise for him playing for Holt. He, uh, he's followed the sort of Jared Bowen route, hasn't he? Uh, really shining for a smaller team, if you like, who are uh, a bit down on their luck. But uh, he will cut off because here come Brentford well, into the With, with uh, Lewis Potter, he gets the ball at the edge of the area. A strike comes in, though. It's a tame effort after a deflection. But uh, certainly, if, that, if there'd have been a goal from that, there would have been an inquest in the Leeds defence because this is just a long clearance up the field from uh, David Ryer. It seemed to just elude everybody and landed straight to uh, Lewis Potter. Yeah, he lands to him, but look at his first touch, superb, over his shoulder, controls it immediately, and then he wriggles to get the shot away. It's a big deflection that takes the ball into Ilan Melier, 
But uh, yeah, thumbs up for uh, Lewis Potter. His first touch was great, wasn't it? It was, yeah. But uh, now Brentford with another chance, and it's a quick throw taken uh, to Lewis Potter. He breaks into the penalty area. Well, he doesn't, in fact, because he stopped right at the edge by Diego Lorente, who is then uh, muscling with the uh, former home man, and the free kick goes against uh, Lorente who is uh, very animated both with the uh, Brentford man and with our uh, referee Rob Jones. He feels as though that uh, free kick was soft, or does he feel that perhaps he might have been pushed himself? But he's holding on to Lewis Potter there, and there's always a chance the referee's going to give that. Yeah, the key moment there, uh, having defended well initially, he slipped, and that allowed uh, Lewis Potter to get goal side. And once you do that, you know, any kind of uh, pull away at the arm or something, you're going to go down and win the free kick. Yeah, an early goal to tell you about. Spurs have just taken the lead against uh, Fulham. We'll confirm the uh, goal scorer in just a moment. That's the only uh, goal in the Premier League so far. And that includes the early kickoff as well, having uh, uh, with the Everton and Liverpool drawing 0 0 in the Merseyside derby earlier today. But it's uh, two free kick takers here for uh, Brentford. It's about uh, seven or eight yards away from the uh, left hand edge of the area. It's almost like a short corner, really. It's right footed Jensen and left footed Mbumo. It's right footed Jensen. He's aiming for goal there, punched away by Elan Melier, headed back towards. Uh, the danger area by uh, Rico Henry, but that's straight onto the head of uh, Drame, who heads that away. And now Leeds potentially can go on a counter-attack. Brentford streaming back in numbers. There's a shot coming in from uh, just inside his own half, I think it was. Uh, was that Jack Harrison who spotted... Uh, or in fact, it was Geldhard who spotted Raya off his line, but he was also off the mark. Yeah, he's got the talent to do that kind of thing, but there he missed, uh, you know, by a country mile, didn't he? You know, he, uh, he spots keeper off his line. He's trying to chip him, but uh, no Wayne Rooney uh, this time. Yeah, we, it's, uh, it's funny, isn't it? That free kick we ended up being a shot, didn't it? But having seen, uh, you know, uh, Luis hit a couple of corners in recently, I think everybody just fancies their chances that little bit more. Yeah, I, I think it's almost like uh, there's an assumption that the keeper won't be beaten at his near post, but if you always assume that, there's a chance that every once in a while he might, he might just be. As uh, Drame and Rico Henry there fighting for the ball on the edge of the field, and I think the, the uh, decision has gone against the Leeds man there. Just see from the replay, has that been given as a foul? As uh, Drame yeah, just clips the... Uh, the right foot there of Rico Henry, who in fairness did actually try to stay on his feet and go after the ball, but uh, couldn't quite manage it. So a free kick to uh, Brentford uh, on the left touchline here. About uh, maybe uh, 10, 11 yards from the goal line. 12 minutes gone, independent of tube studio commentary. Self Paul Shemakovic and uh, John Hogan taking you through the action. It's been a lively start. Not too much happening in front of goal, but both teams with a few sighters. And so uh, now it's with Mbumo and Jensen again, the two regular set-piece uh, takers for Brentford. Just uh, weighing up their options. If, if anything, the angle's more inviting for a shot from, uh, from this sort of range if uh, Jensen fancies it again. But it's probably uh, not the best idea. Melier will be uh, wise to that. Be, uh, Jensen's ball does go towards the near post. He was aiming for a teammate there. Both sets of players uh, with their arms up. And I think he's been given as a corner. Yeah, smuggled out there, I think, by Mark Rocker ahead of his goalkeeper at the near post. Like I said, I, I, I think they're going to have to get delivery just right here, Brentford, because they're, they're not a big team. Pontus Janssen is the, the obvious target for them, but uh, Leeds have got several uh, six-footers in there. Look at the Wikipedia. I was surprised that Ben Mee is not six-foot, and Ivan Tony plays like he's six-foot, but he's only 5'10". Absolutely, but as you say, he does have a good uh, good jump on him, does Ivan Tony, and Ben Mee, is, uh, certainly, whether it was at Burnley or now since he's arrived at Brentford, Always used to uh, to mark up, but he's not the tallest defender. Maybe yeah, he scored a heady goal at Tell Trafford, didn't he? This season uh, at, uh, at, at, at the Jeet, absolutely. When Brentford uh, beat uh, Manchester United, and it was uh, the beating the even smaller defender there, uh, Lissandro Martinez. But it's an outswinger here from Mbumo this time, aimed at Ben Mee, who tried a diving header, couldn't get on the end of it. Is a loose ball at the edge of the area, which Yanel tried to save for Brentford, but he couldn't manage it. And it's brought out here by Aronson. Not seen too much of him so far, but that's good play from him down the uh, right hand side. He was certainly fouled as well. The referee giving an advantage and then making his mind up quickly that there was no advantage and so Leeds get the free kick for the first foul yeah it was good stuff playing out from uh, Aronson there he uh, he volleyed the challenge or two and then he was uh, stopped in his tracks by Matthias Jensen who just uh, came across like a wrecking ball there didn't he but uh, uh, I thought they did uh, fairly well playing out again Brentford uh, I, I hate it when you think oh we're, we're a bit small today so we, we won't put the ball in the box you know, still, if you fire a good ball in as they did there, you can cause trouble. And I thought there was enough trouble there. Leeds are shaky at the back, really. Um, you know, they they always seem to let a goal or two in. So I think you do put the ball in the box. You test him out. They just about, uh, uh, you know, got away with it there. Absolutely. Whether it was under Bielsa or now under Jesse March, that high-intensity 
uh, style of play. It means that uh, the team uh, certainly is always looking to get forward. But a byproduct of that is that they do sometimes uh, leave themselves a little bit open at the back. And uh, Brentford certainly aren't famous for their defensive organisation. A few of the goals they've conceded this season have been uh, pretty poor as well in that regard. But it's a throw on to Brentford down the left-hand side. Now still inside uh, their own half. Rico Henry uh, waiting to take it. I can tell you that the goal for Spurs against uh, Fulham was chalked off. Potentially a VAR review there. So we're still goalless across uh, all the games uh, in the Premier League today. Leeds now in possession uh, deep inside their own half with uh, Diego Lorente. Robin Koch, Leeds need him to stay fit. He's had his injury problems uh, since arriving in England. But uh, say both uh, both sides are still missing a couple of uh, key players as Leeds. Now just finding a bit of space in midfield. That's good work though from Baptiste uh, to win that ball back. It looked as though Leeds were getting men over. Now a ball forward looking for Mbumo. Uh, just a bit too close to Lorenzo, who quickly goes to uh, uh, Tyler Adams. He's caught in possession, but credit to him. He's still uh, able to keep the ball alive for Brentford. Do eventually win it back, and they've got themselves a throw down the left-hand side, taken quickly uh, by Lewis Potter. Now Rico Henry going back to Lewis Potter, who went too far in front. Didn't expect to get the ball back there, and eventually it deflects off him and out for a uh, Leeds throw. Possession stat, 44% Brentford, 56% uh, Leeds United, and uh, Brentford 2-1 in shots. There's, there's, there's not been a glove of chances but the game's been played at a decent pace I think. Yeah but uh, both teams going about their work aren't they? Uh, we know that Brentford will want to play on the uh, counter attack the last ball to and Bumo got uh, cut off didn't it? But uh, he might find uh, once or twice he's in the clear. You know Leeds tend to hold a high line and anybody who could play a good long ball you know uh, could be in uh, and that's what uh, the Bees have been waiting for but the Leeds have got a bit more possession in this game. Now you know, the question is, can they create uh, anything with that? Well, they've got some uh, space going forward now, have Leeds. It was with uh, Mark Rocker over to uh, Sinisterra. Rocker again. Gelhardt just dropped a bit deeper, but he gets a chance to shoot. It takes a big deflection. It completely wow. wrong-footed David Raya. It was never going on target, but there was no chance of Raya uh, c coming back to save a corner kick from that. So Leeds are going to get a set piece now. And so what I liked about Gelhardt there, he's still a long way from goal. He's a centre forward, but he's not worrying about getting too close. He was quite happy to shoot from outside the box. I think the effort was going off target, though. Yeah, he was going wide. He sort of scraped it with left foot. But what I like about that is that he, he earned the right. You know, he got the ball out of his feet. He's at the edge of the area. You know, go on, give it a go. He might have deflected in that, but it's a corner. Corner kick out. Swinger here from uh, Jack Harrison. Gets a bit of height on this one, and uh, Ben Meek gets his head to that, heads it out to, towards the edge of the area, headed back in by Drame. It's still uh, bouncing around inside the box before it's headed back towards goal. I think that was uh, Lewis Potter in the end that got his uh, head to that, and Raya then clears it up the field, and potentially that could have got through uh, on the counter-attack, but that's good work. Leeds had enough players back, which is something you have to do against Brentford, something that Brentford are actually guilty of not doing themselves sometimes, that when you are, when you have got a set-piece, you do have to leave those uh, players back on the halfway line. Yeah, you need your insurance, don't you? Uh, you know, if you look at Brentford's goals this season, uh, how they played at, uh, against Manchester United in that great victory, you know, uh, a lot of it was uh, catching, uh, you know, the Red Devils on the counter-attack and certainly catching them uh, early and high up the field. There's a lot of energy. And Bumo's one of those players, I think the stats for him and the amount of sprints he put in a game is, is phenomenal. And that's what you're up against, you know. But you know that. So you, you're probably uh, going to defend a bit deeper. Absolutely. But then when uh, watching the Leeds game against uh, Chelsea a few weeks after that Brentford win against Manchester United, I thought that there were shades of the way Brentford played in terms of Leeds having that high press, putting the, the supposedly much uh, bigger, more fancy team under pressure and, and getting uh, getting the benefit from that. Brentford benefited from a terrible uh, mistake from uh, David De Gea, as, as indeed Leeds did with uh, with Edouard Mendy. So as we often say on our commentaries, you sometimes have to just work to get that little bit of good luck. And uh, certainly both teams going into this game today have shown in more than one fixture that they're able to, to play at a very high intensity. Just seem to be cancelling each other out a little bit in this game so far. I've not seen too much in front of goal. Stravick getting forward again there for Leeds. But uh, that's uh, stopped by Mbumo. A bit of a loose ball there from Yano into midfield. Gave no chance uh, for Baptiste uh, to get on the end of that. Here is uh, Diego Lorenzo now. Going uh, square. Finding uh, Mark Rocker. Geld Hart's dropped a little bit deeper. He goes uh, back towards the halfway line. Leeds just uh, quite happy to uh, keep possession for the time being. Koch over towards uh, Rocca. Now a ball over the top. That's a good ball as well. Stravick is chasing it. Been followed here by Mbumo. You could say that both players are out of position really. But uh, Stravick holding it up. Going back to Harrison. 
And uh, Harrison Square now uh, towards uh, Tyler Adams. Well, it looked like it was opening up for him. He didn't want to get the shot away. Then there's a challenge at the edge of the area. Another challenge coming in. Referee not seeing any foul for the time being. Leeds able to recycle the ball and they go uh, back towards the halfway line again. But it seemed like both sets of players were just sort of waiting for that ball to, uh, to be dealt with at the edge of the area. Here come Leeds again now. Aronson in towards uh, Sinistera. Tries to get it back. That's good work though from Janel to win that ball back for Brentford. Ivan Tony now under real pressure and Ivan Tony winning his side of free kick in the end. Uh, Robin Koch just not prepared to let him turn. No, that's right. And then he seemed to run into a little bit of trouble. In fact, it's Lorente again. Yeah. Uh, who, uh, yeah, just the wrong side of doing too much there, wasn't he? Um, Leeds, uh, again, they're playing all right until he gets that final third, that final ball. Tyler Adams there running forward with the ball. He, and then all of a sudden he just runs into a challenge, you know. Um, you know, he looks like a, a wrecking ball of a player and lots of energy about him. Whether that makes him a Premier League player, I don't know. And he, there's a lot to work on. A lot of these are just young fellas. And, you know, both teams uh, are relatively young, aren't they? Uh, uh, at the moment, you just want to see both teams pass the ball that little bit better because uh, they're both denying themselves sort of uh, chances to go on. Yeah, they're just uh, lacking that little bit of a cohesion in the final third. Brentford are actually lacking a bit of a possession in the final third. If we've got to, we've got to 21 minutes now, independent of Tube Studio commentary, and it is still goalless between Brentford and Leeds, but Leeds are now more than shading it in terms of uh, possession. And uh, they're trying to push forward here again now, but Brentford are playing quite a high offside line, which uh, does have its benefit of condensing uh, the, the pitch, but it also means that if they get it wrong, Leeds have certainly got the pace to try and uh, exploit that. Challenge coming in at the edge of the area, no free kick, and now it's uh, Baptiste uh, bringing the ball out for uh, Brentford, playing it up towards uh, Tony, who hits the deck, but he wasn't foul. We play on, and here is Harrison now getting away from Hickey. Hickey trying to come back at him. Harrison forced all the way to the left-hand edge of the penalty area. Janelt is following him there as well. Eventually, Brentford uh, do clear it up towards the halfway line where King Lewis Potter is closing that one down, but uh, Koch gets there first, plays it back to uh, Meliate, and uh, leads uh, back in possession again. Just one stick for uh, either side in that uh, final third. Certainly in terms of uh, the possession in the last five, six minutes, if any side was more likely to score, you'd think it was Leeds, really. Looking just a little bit more accomplished in terms of uh, possession. And uh, Mark Rocker on the ball now, bringing it uh, forward. Again, Brentford, I mean, just to give an example, Leeds have got possession just uh, inside Brentford's half on the halfway line. And the Brentford back line are only about 20 yards away, so it really has made it very narrow. But if Leeds can get through that offside line, then all of a sudden they should find a route to goal. But it's uh, cleared away. Baptiste slides in. He couldn't keep possession for Brentford, though. It's uh, back with uh, Mark Rocker again. Him and uh, Tyler Adams have seen plenty of the ball, as you would expect for the two holder midfielders. But Brentford winning back in midfield and now potentially a chance to go on a counter. But because Leeds have been in so much possession, Brentford won the ball back and they didn't have any anyone to pass to. That's the problem, isn't it? That, that's your sort of uh, Barcelona conundrum. You know, teams that eventually get the ball off Barca then look up, there's nobody to pass to. You know, if you're too narrow, just dropping back too deep. Um, and I think they are really uh, the bees. Uh, but anyway, here come Leeds again down the left-hand side. Yeah, they do. Space here uh, for uh, Jack Harrison. Strout played the ball to him. Harrison, though, doesn't fancy taking on Aaron Hickey. Goes back towards uh, uh, Tyler Adams. Closed down here by uh, Baptiste. Leeds still plenty of players forward, but they're going back for the time being. It's over towards uh, Drame now. Then he spots the run of Sinistera down the uh, right-hand side. That's good work, though, from uh, Ben Mee, because he's never going to win a race with uh, Sinistera. Just turned and got the ball away from him. That's good play from Tony as well, just to flick it back towards Baptiste. And then he finds Mbumo heading towards the area. Oh, Mbumo, he skips away from Strauch, and then he plays the ball across. Here is uh, Lewis Potter now, strikes it towards goal. That's good work from Robin Koch. Saving the situation there for Leeds because Brentford had numbers over this time. Yeah, that's the Brentford game, isn't it? You know, uh, sort of uh, invite them onto the sword. And then when they broke, it was three against two just for a, a brief moment. And Boomer beats Strauch. He's not a left back. But I think uh, there, Lewis Potter's first touch really lets him down. You know, the one where uh, out from the keeper, he controlled it instantaneously. There, ball just gets away from him. Allows Cop to come across and block his shot. It's unfortunate that, that he couldn't, you know, get that instant control because then he, uh, I think he, he's got the, the goal at his mercy. I really do. He does. But we've gone over the halfway mark in this first half. 24 minutes gone. It is goalless between Brentford and Leeds. And it will be John to take us through to half time. Yeah, that was the best chance we've just seen. And that was uh, pretty typical stuff from the Bees. That's how they play. And Mbuma's such a good player. Uh, I mean, it was a good ball from him as well. Strout there beaten. 
And, uh, well, again, you know, uh, I think the Leeds fans were disappointed they didn't buy uh, a left back. Um, transfer window is uh, closed now, and I'm sure that I think Furpo's a bit closer. Not that he necessarily is the answer for them anyway. And I think Stuart Dallas coming back, but again, he's a right footed player, you know, uh, forced to play left back. As we see a throw from Brentford, Powell with the edge of the area, not being Ooh. cleared away. Now, is there a foul in the box? Well, the arms go up for Brentford. And uh, Melia didn't have the ball in his hands, wriggling on the, the deck with Tony. But uh, I don't know what the referee is giving here, just uh, talking to Ivan Tony. And, but uh, Rob Jones then talking to the referee. And, uh, and uh, maybe VAR is going to play a part here. We'll have to take a look because I didn't really see what went on. No, but the throw comes in from Jensen. It's headed back towards goal, I think, by one of the Leeds players. And then it's Mbumo going after the ball here, just at the edge of the six yard box. Is he actually uh, brought down? It's actually Tony that goes after it. Mm, even that replay wasn't particularly good in, in, in answering the question for us, but it's uh, Tony and uh, uh, Drame that got uh, tangled there, isn't it? I think it might have been Sinistera. Oh, Sinistera. But uh, 23, I mean, it's possible it's a penalty. I think you, you make the argument that he's challenging from the wrong side. VR's taking a look at it. Handball, they're saying. Uh, didn't see a handball in there. Um I, I unless, unless it's after he's challenged Tony and then he stopped the ball as it was going through his legs, potentially that might be what uh, VAR well, are looking at. Now they're looking at a potential foul as well, John. Yeah, I, I think the argument is that he's challenging from the wrong side, but the way the ball's spinning away, I tell you what, six and two threes, they could give a penalty here and I'd understand it, uh, and if they didn't equally. I think the ball just gets away from Tony. Momentarily he's goal side, but then Sinistera seems to win it. I, d I don't know which way he's going to swing. And it could go either way. It's taking a, a very, very long time. And uh, for the time being, we've not seen Rob Jones being asked to go over to the monitor. Now, that is because on a few occasions, the VAR decisions have been made just by, by Stockley Park. I think they're trying to speed the process up because I know that's certainly a bugbear of mine last season. That the referee stands on the pitch for three minutes telling everyone to calm down and then has to go over and see the replay. Just go over and see the replay straight away. Yeah, I think uh, Robert Jones there... Uh he is, he's let the odd challenge go in. He wouldn't necessarily have given a free kick for that outside the box from what we've seen. But they still might invite him to take a look at that, which would put him on pressure. Uh, before that, we're looking at a possible handball. That might actually have come out of a, a, a Brentford arm. Uh, don't know. We need to see that again. Well, he's been called over to take a look and to see if he's made a big mistake in not giving a penalty kick. So the inference is that the assistant referee or the VAR referee thinks it's a penalty. I'd love for someone to, we, we, we may need to do our research on this as well, what the exact stat is for how often a referee goes to the monitor but then doesn't change his mind because most of the time they do. But uh, with this one, I think Rob Jones is certainly sort of squinting, getting a really good look at the monitor just to try and work out whether or not there is a foul there. He's getting a couple of uh, Leeds players now behind him with the uh, linesman as his uh, bodyguard there just to try and... Well, you don't need coaching from the players, do you, watching the incident again? Like I said, it's six and two threes. He looks at that and he'll be confused because it's not obvious. Did he make a big mistake there? Why are they calling him over? I don't think it's a great big mistake if he didn't give it. If he, but equally, if he gives it, I don't think they'll be taking a look at it, taking it off. I think... Uh, I, I don't know. Is he going to point to spot... He is. He is. It's a penalty kick. I'm, I'm not overly surprised at that. I, I just felt it was a, a desperate challenge from Sinistera, who gets a yellow card as well. The uh, the ball, you could argue, is bouncing away from Ivan Tony. I think he's very harsh getting a yellow card to the Colombian. Penalty might be enough, but a penalty it is. So uh, the Bees have got a real opportunity here. There was a melee in the box, and uh, it does look like Sinistera just got a little bit too anxious. I think the ball might have been spinning away from Ivan Tony, but for a moment, he got goal side. And at that moment, I felt that he got challenged from the back. You can't do that. Um, what do you, is that it, Paul? Do you think that's about I th right? I, th I think you've summed it up there, John. I think it is, it's one of those where th th this is the grey area with VAR. What is a glaring error and what isn't? Because I suppose... It's, it's one of those things where the challenge is enough to say it's a penalty, but then I, I'm the same with you. I suppose the question would be, if he gave a penalty, would VAR then ask him to look at it potentially for it not being a penalty? It's a, it's a difficult one, but uh, that's potentially just a little bit of an experience as well. Sinistera, uh, more of an attacking midfielder, really trying to help out at the edge of his six-yard box. And obviously the intent is to try and win the ball, but he's just not got a touch on the ball. No, so, well, he, I think he's, he scraped a foot on the ball, but then the argument is that he's bundling into his man whether he gets the ball or not. 
which you might argue is a foul somewhere else. Anyway, Ivan Tony puts the ball down. <laughs> We're pretty certain where the ball's going to go, usually into the back of the net. He's good at these. Anyway, uh, Melier stood up, bouncing, waiting for Ivan Tony, who takes a look, just uh, composes himself up his steps, right foot, and thumps it in. Sent Melier the wrong way. Brentford 1 leads nil. Well, he's been uh, pretty much uh, unstoppable from the spot, Ivan Tony. He gets uh, every, every penalty he's taken for Brentford so far. He has converted. He carries that on here on 29 minutes. And uh, Leeds United have uh, a uh, deficit to try and make up for now. And that's a decision I'm sure will frustrate uh, uh, Jesse March and his players. But with, with, from what I've seen of Jesse March since, uh, since he's been at Leeds, he tends to use negativity as more sort of fuel to the fire. He's, he's, you know, with his quotes and his general manner being one of being positive, even when he gets in the faces of other managers, it's, it's still because of the enthusiasm. So th- this could work as, as rocket fuel for Leeds now. Maybe. Uh, I think it's one of those things. They, uh, they're not a foolproof team, are they, Leeds? And, you know, a lot of their points are going to have to be scraped from losing positions. That's just the way it is. The, you know, you can't make them world beaters. They've, they've spent a bit of money. But they're uh, betting a lot of uh, players in, like Sinistera, who you think might learn from that. Anyway, um, Leeds who uh, d- uh, dominate the piece realise that from set piece they're uh, you know they're not rock solid, and they're uh, very uh, likely to get caught counter attack as well. Other than that, they actually they played all right so far today. And here they go through the middle. The ball played to Aronson, gets it out of his feet, strapped left hand side. But he's all right foot. He goes back to uh, Tyler Adams. I think they let him have the ball. Nobody goes to uh, rush him there. Took a long time to uh, then play an ordinary pass, but Strauk uh, puts a decent-looking ball in. Ball breaks the edge of the area, and the shot comes in. That's uh, blocked away. So, uh, again, uh, leads back on the ball. Cody Drama picks it up, and uh, I'm sure they're looking for some kind of reaction. They're looking for a reaction. They need to have a nice spell in front of Brentford's penalty, area, like they did in the five, seven minutes before Brentford's goal, just to put the Bees' defence under pressure. They very nearly got that ball through to Gelthart, but uh, Brentford making a bit of a mess of playing out from the back here, and then Mbumo completely misses it, Leeds still with a chance. Tyler Adams wins it, but then his pass is terrible at the edge of the area. Leeds have it back with the uh, strike. Now to left-hand side, uh, Harrison who uh, gets the byline, puts a decent-looking ball in. Nobody can get on the end of that, but uh, it's not being cleared by the bees. Here comes Rocker, left-hand side, drills the ball across the face. That's blocked away. That will be a corner. You've seen a, a good response here from uh, the Whites. Absolutely. They kicked off, and they haven't really given away possession since then. Just a quick uh, one on Ivan Tony. That is, in fact, his 50th goal for, uh, for Brentford. And uh, considering he's, uh, this is just the beginning of his third season at the club, he's doing very well indeed. Yeah, I mean, his uh, goal return ratio is very good, isn't it? And it doesn't seem to matter what company he keeps, you know, from uh, Championship up to uh, Premier League. Uh, he's scored goals. Anyway, uh, the uh, ball's just cleared away from that corner kick. Uh, Leeds uh, against uh, Everton in midweek. And here, the corners have been uh, pretty poor, particularly from Harrison, who... Uh, it's surprising, really, because as a winger, you'd expect a little bit more from him. As, uh, again, Tyler Adams uh, nearly gives the ball away. Well, not only that, is it disappointing for Harrison, because we know that he's got a, a good delivery on him. It's just, as you made the point, that Leeds have got a height advantage over Brentford, so you want to capitalise on that and get good, quick whip balls in towards David Raya, who is a very good goalkeeper, but if he does have an Achilles, so it probably is dealing with crosses. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's only six foot. I mean, uh, we always think about that. There's some great Spanish players, but... You know, in their league, uh, somebody regardless told me not be as a shot comes in from Ivan Tony, and that's blocked away by Melia. A great play again from Mbuma, but maybe the flag had gone up. Offside it is down the uh, far side. Was it Tony? Was it Mbuma? I don't know, but again, that's so typical of, uh, of Brentford going forward. Tony is just offside as the ball's played, and he should do better than that. He should have watched it, because that was actually a really good chance for Brentford. They just uh, broke through on that to right-hand side with Mbumo. Very quiet afternoon in the Premier League so far. Just a goal here at the GTEC. Brentford lead against Leeds, and at uh, the City ground, where Nottingham Forest, uh, one of the multitude of new signings, Chekyu Kuyate has got the goal for a uh, Forest with uh, Morgan Gibbs-White uh, on the assist there. So they're the only two goals uh, in all the uh, fixtures uh, in the Premier League so far. Yep, um, and Brentford, uh, they've picked a pocket to some degree, but they're, they're playing how they play. You can see the two distinct styles, uh, Leeds in embryo. They, they put a lot of pace on the ball. There's a lot of uh, hard running goes in to, to doing what they're doing, but at the moment uh, there's a, a bit of a lack of uh, quality in that final third, that final pass. Uh, Mark Rock has shot it quite well so far. We haven't seen much of Sinistera going forward. 
Aronson again, I'm sure he's working hard wherever he is, but he tends to tank after about an hour. I keep having to take him off. So uh, I don't know where his, his energy is going. Sometimes he, that might be slightly misplaced. Um, and Joe Gallart, the striker, he's not really a target man, so they, they need to spoon-feed the ball to him. Well, Here's the- Aronson again on the break as Sinistera picks it up. And another uh, opportunity, uh, he's got skill, the Colombian, and he manages to evade a challenge or two. Ball breaks back for Rocket, goes for strike, and at least it was on target. An easy save for Raya. It is straight out. Raya's just got to make sure he gets his hands to that. But it's the fact that it's good build-up from Leeds, patient build-up. And in the end, an effort on target, albeit uh, not enough movement on it really to, to worry the, uh, the Brentford keeper. But looking at the Leeds bench, there are attacking options. Greenwood is there. Uh, there is also uh, the potential for Cliff, who though he's sort of dropped out of form recently. You mentioned Bamford, who's just coming back to fitness. And also nice to see uh, a very popular player at Leeds United, Luke Ayling, after his knee injury. He's, he's back on the bench today as well. Yeah, he is. And, uh, you know, I, th- I think that they made a signing... Uh Managed to uh, snaffle one of the few uh, Danish players that Brentford didn't want <laughs> uh, in Christiansen. But uh, jury's out on him. Anyway, uh, Aronson now down the left-hand side. And then a, a little shimmy from uh, Harrison. Evades his marker, buys himself a second. Harrison's playing well this season. But like I said, uh, needs to uh, work on his uh, corner kicks. As uh, Rocket floats a good ball out to uh, Cody Drama, who uh, controls it. And then sort of dallies with the ball caught in his feet a bit. They, uh, they need to get quicker ball here. Transition for a lead is not exactly slow, but it's not quick either. You know, uh, they're just lacking a little bit of punch, I feel. They are. I think from Leeds' point of view, they've got to see that Brentford are pretty linear in terms of how they set up. When Leeds are in possession, Brentford will push up to try and condense the space that Leeds have. Uh, so it's down to Leeds to try and find those gaps in the offside. We saw a move in the very first few minutes where a ball was threaded through uh, an effort on goal. Never, it never ended up coming from it. And again, we see there a ball fired across the six-yard box, but it's all far too close to, uh, to David Raya. Yeah, and like I said, it's not a target man either, but Leeds then picked the ball up with uh, Strout. This time doing a good job uh, under pressure from um, Bumo. And then again, Tyler Adams on the ball. Three, four touches for him, but he's not good enough to do that. He needs to control and pass and pass to somebody better. You know, for Leeds, they don't really want him on the ball too often. He chips a percentage ball forward. Janssen gets goal side of uh, Gellar, who tries to tangle with him. Ball played through the legs of Harrison, and well, it's cool and calm uh, from Brentford playing out. A little bit risky, but uh, they managed to get away with that. I don't like that. A pass going diagonally across your own penalty area with about four opposition players within, uh, within reach of it. It's, uh, it's confident when it goes well, but it's always a risk. As uh, this time, it's uh, a free kick given against uh, Tyler Adams, who is really berating the referee. He feels as though there was an elbow from the Brentford player in the midst of all of that. And he's got a point, in fairness. Rico Henry does use the elbow, and then it's almost the knee of uh, Tyler Adams that stops Henry getting away. And that's what the free kick's been given for. Yeah, he uh, is a rugged midfielder, Tyler Adams. And I thought that was just a tangle, which he got the better of, and then foul. But the foul's gone the other way, and it is what it is. But he's uh, hyper-competitive. You know, uh, I I think uh, so far he's settled uh, into life pretty well. But like I said, I think that he he needs to move the ball on a little bit quicker. Here at Leeds, just floating a long ball forward again. It's well dealt with by Ben Mee, just comes across. You know, again, uh, Pontus Janssen's the captain on the field, but Ben Mee, we know, a captain that skippered Burnley really well, I thought. You know, uh, he, he's a clever fella, you know, uh, and I think there are, there are plenty of leaders in this uh, Brentford team. Anyway, 38 minutes gone, Brentford one leads nil. And, uh, and so far, really, David Ryan has not had that much to do. Leeds have seen plenty of the ball, but uh, just that final pass. But uh, here, Harrison uh, making ground. Good ball to the edge of the area. Sinistera. Uh, trying to uh, break onto that left foot and get a shot away, but, but Brentford have done the homework that Everton didn't. You know, he, he's all left foot, really. What's the strike with that left? And they just shuffled him across. The bees are very narrow, aren't they, when they defend? So he's running into a sea of traffic as uh, I think Lorente goes down holding a, yeah. his head there. He's got a uh, blow to the eye there, it looks like, uh, Diego Lorente. And uh, we'll wait and see. Uh, exactly what's happened here. It's Ivan Tony who seems to have been the one uh, that's collided with him. The referee doesn't seem to be too concerned about it being a foul. He just wants to make sure that the uh, the Leeds man is okay. But uh, we'll see from this replay as this uh, ball was played out. I'm quite sure exactly what happened. It was uh, Baptiste that played the ball forward, and as uh, Imbumo left it here for Tony, and in fact, no, there was nobody. It's just the Strauch suddenly 
Has he got a nosebleed or he's suddenly got a rush of blood to the head? But that didn't look particularly good. It's, it's, it's good to see that he's okay to play on. I think there must have been contact before Tony dropped back for the ball. Um, anyway, it is what it is. Uh, Leeds have the ball now down the right-hand side with the uh, drama. Uh, they need to get their uh, more talented players involved. Gellart Sinistera, I would have thought. Ball fizzed forward. Gellart, uh, great control. And then a shot. He's just gone wide. It's good play from him again. He just uh, lacks that final uh, finish, doesn't he? The coup de grace. A lovely give and go inside the area. And he's a nice, tidy player. Needs to finish it off. He does. He likes playing in West London. He got his first goal for Leeds away at uh, Chelsea, didn't he, last season? If, uh, certainly first goal in the, uh, in the Premier League for, uh, for, his, uh, for his club. And they're not too far away. Just the wrong side of goal. It's the right idea to, to try and get a bit of lift on that as well. And it's warnings to Brentford that uh, even though Leeds perhaps are just missing that final pass into the final third, they've still got enough to, to threaten Brentford here if Brentford drop off. Yeah, I, I, this is the game I thought we were going to see. I, you know, it's very even. If Brentford score the next goal, obviously it's going to be a long way back for Leeds. But Leeds have dominated possession and territory and... You know, even if they're a little bit short of uh, top qualities, uh, Brentford here come forward and ball in the box is still not being dealt with. Eventually, uh, Stroud comes across. Um, for Leeds, it's a bit like, uh, you know, throwing mud at the wall. Uh, you know, some of it might stick eventually. You know, they might find Gillard in a better position or Sinistera. And, uh, well, to, uh, I mean, they're probably about, you know, 56% possession, something like that, I think. You know, that's where they were the first uh, 20 20 minutes or so you know if they can continue like that then they might carve out chance but just for the moment then there's a free kick for Brentford Robin Cockett is the uh, guilty party just at the edge of the box um, again it, it looks like a tangle but uh, with Shandon Baptiste I don't I'm not sure that's yeah, a foul Co Cox lifted his foot there a little bit the replay we saw wasn't ideal because it just had Tyler Adams cutting across the picture there but uh, this is an interesting stat the longer the first half has wore on the more Leeds have dominated in terms of possession 67% now wow. for to Brentford's 33 Leeds leading 6-4 in terms of uh, shots on goal, but Brentford leading 2-1 in terms of shots on target. And, of course, that one goal from Ivan Tony so far from the penalty spot, uh, giving the Bees the lead. But certainly, statistically, a lot of encouragement for Leeds that they're very much in this game. Yeah, they're, they've seen plenty of the ball, not creating the right lot with it, but uh, now a real opportunity for uh, Brentford. Thomas Frank makes his uh, notes. They're all stood over it. You don't want to hit it, but it's uh, going to suit a right-footed effort from the edge of the area. Generally speaking, it's the player who's put the ball down. Um, if uh, Matthias Jensen's the right foot option, I think it's him who's going to hit it. But uh, anyway, and Bumo stood over it as well. Uh, three players uh, stood around it. There's also a, a mini Brentford wall in front of the Leeds wall as well. There's a lot, a real cluster of players there uh, around. It's to basically two walls in front of uh, Melier now. Yeah, and uh, and a man behind the uh, wall as well. But oh! the ball smashed into the back of the net, and Brentford have scored. I mean, there's great disguise on that. Who's going to hit the ball? And in the end, well, it was a, a smashing Ivan strike. Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony, who we, we suspected wasn't. He just got a little touch on the ball, you know. And I always think whoever touched the ball last is going to hit it. I thought there was great disguise in that free kick. And in the end, I think Melier was mesmerised. But let's take a look. Steps wow. up Ivan Tony. Well, he, he's almost he's almost like he sent the keeper the wrong way, but not from a penalty, but from a free kick. It's a, he's got, it gets real bend on that. That is right in the postage stamp as well. And Melier's looking the other way. He, he's gone to see where the ball's curling the other way, and suddenly it's in the top corner. It's an absolute perler from Ivan Tony. Well, I tell you what, I don't think there's a goalkeeper alive who's going to save that. You know, you set up his wall and it's almost blindsided him. We said it's going to be a right foot strike. That ball started outside the goal frame and probably higher and dipped in, went round, curled right into the top corner. I mean, it's a beauty. It's an absolute it beauty. Is a, it is a stunning goal from, uh, from Brentford and that's off the back of what we just said before the free kick, which was that Leeds were actually gaining even more possession, getting more shots away. But it's now uh, an uphill task here for Leeds. They've got to try and get to... Well, they've not got, we've not got much time left in this first half, although I expect we're going to see at least four minutes of injury time because of uh, all the VAR checks, etc. But uh, needless to say, if they can get a goal back before half-time, uh, great, Leeds. But if, uh, if not, they've got to score early in the second. Yeah, you'd have thought so. Uh, Melier uh, looks disappointed, but there's not much you can do about that. Uh, you know, he'd have needed a, a stepladder and uh, help from Peter Shilton, you feel, to 
to stop that. It just, it's just too good. And sometimes you've got to hold your hand up, don't you? Uh, but Leeds are trying to get back in here. Uh, Harrison now just the edge of the area. Well, it was a good-looking cross in very nearly an own goal, but that is some brilliant defending from Ben Mee yet again. Needed to be. Leeds, uh, this is what impressed me after Leeds conceded their first goal, that they responded by going forward straight away, and they do so here again. A ball in from Harrison, and as you said, it's uh, last-ditch stuff there from Ben Mee uh, to make sure he gets that ball away. Not the most orthodox way, but it, it was effective. He gets the ball away and out for a corner. Yeah, he, uh, he might have shinned that one in, but uh, anyway, corner kick... Uh, Harrison uh, takes it. It's a better ball in this time. It's only just scraped away by the rear guard. And now uh, Mbumo looking for the counter-attack, but that's stopped in its tracks. And uh, in the end, uh, Cody Drummer's done pretty well uh, coming across and stopping Mbumo. Brentford two leads, nil into three minutes of uh, added time. Um, I thought there might have been a bit more than that, actually. Thinking, I mean, the VAR check on its own probably took about two minutes just for that. And then obviously you, you, you lose time every time a goal is scored. But uh, for Brentford's point of view, I think they'll be quite happy. The sooner they can get in with this two-goal lead, the better. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, I would say it flatters uh, Brentford a little bit, but you can't take away the quality of the goal. The, uh, the penalty, uh, you know, contentious, uh, I would have said. Uh, but it's one of those. We, we could certainly understand uh, why it was given, although Rob Jones didn't initially hear. Maybe an opportunity oh. as Sinistera breaks... And puts the shot in. Oh, and he's drilled in. He's got a right foot too. And he's used it this time to drag Leeds back into the game. The Colombians repaying some of the, what, 23 million it was who was spent on him. It's a great strike that. And, uh, well, it's Brentford 2, Leeds 1. It is 2-1. And Leeds needed that before half time because they've uh, certainly had a lot of possession and would have felt as though they were value for, for getting that, uh, that equaliser before, well, sorry, getting on the score sheet before the break. Brentford, I don't know what their defence is doing here. Everyone's just won wandered forward, a sort of hopeful, hopeful hand in the air there from Pontus Janssen asking for an offside, which is never going to happen. And it's, uh, it's disappointing from Brentford, but take nothing away from the young Colombian. He does well to get himself into that shooting position and uh, drills it into the bottom corner. I have a, a big degree of sympathy there for Rico Henry because I, uh, what I've said is that this kid is all left foot. And, uh, and so there, he controls it on his left. If Rico Henry is overcommitting to push him into the middle, what he's not banking on here is that this kid's got a brilliant right foot as well. So uh, in the end, he controls it left into a right foot finish, but the finish is top quality, you know. Uh, so uh, goodness knows what they've got in this young Colombian, Luis Sinistera, but, you know, it's a one uh, goal in his last two uh, starts. So, uh, you know, it's great stuff. So we see a shot from range here for uh, Brentford. That's uh, flying over the top. Well, what a game this is turning out to be. But, Absolutely, uh, yeah. But a second goal to tell you about at the City ground as well, where Brennan Johnson, I'm sadly old enough to remember when his dad was a footballer, but Brennan Johnson has now scored for a Nottingham Forest from the penalty spot to make it 2-0 against uh, Bournemouth in that battle of the uh, newly promoted sides. Half-time at uh, Stamford Bridge where it's goalless between Chelsea and West Ham. Goalless is uh, St. James's as well between uh, Newcastle and Crystal Palace. Well, we've seen three pretty good goals. Two of them absolute beauties, really, uh, and the other one, a penalty uh, that you don't stop when Ivan Tony's taking a penalty. He, uh, he knows the, uh, the route to uh, net as uh, Leeds win the ball inside their own half. Sinistera is looking the real deal. Uh, might even uh, you know, uh, erase the memories of uh, Rafinha if he keeps playing uh, like he is anyway. That's all good news for, for Leeds. But there's still a goal behind. It's 2-1. The referee uh, now has seen enough. And there we go. It's 2-1 going into the break.